Hello everyone, Dokiller here, and welcome to another random Minecraft video. So, I've been getting the question about how I get Porthos to stay in the council, like we can see him right here, and how we can get to pick him up and set him back on there, and all of that. So, I thought I'd make a little tutorial about how to do that. And, yes, you can set him down just ordinarily by placing him like that, but I believe you need a diamond pickaxe to pick him back up, and... The other thing for me is the reason why I always use this method of being able to pick him up like this and that is because it retains his name tag. If you p place him down and then mine him back up, he'll just come back with the ge generic name of Handles. And I, as you guys know, custom name my Handles to Porthos. So that's why I use this method to put him down because it retains his name. So how I'm doing this actually is he's being held on there with an armor stand. So I'm just going to make that visible by using the entity data command and saying at E type equals armor stand and I'll give that a little bit of a radius here and I can say invisible colon zero and that makes the item stand visible and as you can see he's just being held on by the item stand or the the armor stand I mean and he's just looks like he's being resting here on this button but in reality, he's just being held by an armor stand that has been turned invisible and positioned in the exact location it needs to be. So I just thought I'd give a brief tutorial on this, and it's also a good tutorial to give about using armor stands and armor stand art and decorating and all of that, which this can also be applied to. So first off, we have an armor stand, and you can place, you know, helmet, just plate, all of that on there. But the first thing we need is to give it arms. So once again, we're going to use the entity data command at E, type equals armor stand and give it a small radius because otherwise you'll be targeting every armor stand in your world and that could get a little bit messy because you don't want them to all look the same. So give a radius nearby of about one or two and stand really close to the armor stand when you use this command. And the first thing that we're going to run inside here, so open and close some curly brackets and then we need to say show arms colon one. And when you hit enter that's going to give the ar armor stand arms. So that makes him capable of hoarding items, just like handles. So give him arms and you can make him hold the item that you want him to. And so now we need to rotate the arm to the correct angle that we need. So as you can see, I have him facing up a little bit. Looks like he's actually resting there, not just kind of down at that little bit of an angle like it is in the armor stand. So we need to rotate the armor stand's arms to get it at the exact angle that we need. So this is where some trial and error comes in. This depends on where you want to have your item resting at. So in a previous video, I've made them, I've had items laying flat across the surface, for instance. You'll want to rotate the item, the arms on the armor stand for that. Or if you want to do it this way, you need to just rotate the arm so the angle looks best for the location that you want it at. So it may help to teleport the item, the armor stand, to the location that you need to be at or roughly close by. I'll be getting into teleporting a little bit later in this video, but for now, we're just going to try to eye it up and get the arm close to how we want it. Any more exact detail we can manipulate later on. So the first thing that we need to use is now use the pose tag. So this is a very important tag. So it's pose, colon, and open and close another set of curly brackets. Inside them, we need to use the right arm. So we can pose the head, the body, the legs of this, and we can pose both the right and left arms. Now, since the left arm isn't holding anything, we don't really need to worry about that, but you can pose the left arm if you want to make like a armor stand statue or whatever you want to do. There's a lot of people who use that, but right now, the right arm is the only thing we're going to worry about. So type in right arm, colon, open and close some square brackets, and inside them, we can start typing out our angles. So this will rotate it on the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. So if we just want to give it a 45 degree angle, we can type in 45.0, then we can do comma, and we can say 0.0, .0 for the other values for now. When we hit enter, that should rotate the arm to a 45 degree angle. But it did not. There we go, guys. So, as you can see, I did not put the F in here, and it didn't work. So, when we type it in, we need to say 45.0F. I thought we didn't, I honestly thought we didn't need that, but turns out we do. So, the F stands for float. Don't worry about that. Just put an F after the value, because as you just saw, it did not work. 
without that f. So that the positive values tend to bring it backwards for some reason. So if you want it to go forwards instead of backwards, we can just say negative. And that will move it forwards a bit for us. So now he's looking upwards. So depending on how you want the item that you're having the item stand hold, this may be an angle that you want, or it may be too extreme or not, but you can just play around with this first angle until you get the value that you want. So for handles here, he really isn't rotated that high. So I think I have him around a 30 degree angle at the very most, but as you can see, he's kind of looking up a bit. So I kind of want him to be up a little bit like that. and That's kind of good enough for me, but you can play around with that value until you get what you want. So the next one will rotate around the y-axis. So if I just give it a 10 degree value here, you'll see that the arm kind of goes out a bit. Let's exaggerate that a bit more, however. Let's give it 100 degrees. And now the arm has been twisted around by quite a bit. So this just kind of twists it around in a... The arm kind of stays in the same angle that we had it initially. This kind of twists it around this way like this is what this value does. So this can be useful for some finer details. I generally don't use this one very much, but we can just twist it back. And this is going to change a little bit of how handles look. So if I change that to negative 20, you can see the arm kind of makes him looking off in this direction now. If we go back, lower that a bit, maybe positive 10. Now he's looking off into another direction. So that's what that value is useful for. I don't tend to use that one as much myself. So the next one is the z-axis, and this is going to move it in a bit of a different way. So if we type in a value for this, maybe 45 again, and hit enter, this is going to bring the arm out some, as you can see. So if we go negative 45, that's going to bring it the other way in a little bit. You can actually get the arms to do all kinds of crazy stuff and rotate at any, any angle. That's not something you have to worry about. But yeah, that's what this value does. So it brings it out away from the armor stand or in a bit closer, kind of off to the sides of the armor stand while the other one goes out front and back. And then once again, the middle value will twist it around the armor stand's body itself. So by combining all three of these values, you can get handles to look off in just about any direction that you want them to, or get the item that you have in here to be at any angle that you want in all three dimensions. So this is something you may want to play around a little bit with, and just to get it to the angle that you sort of want it, but eventually just kind of eye it up and get it there. And then you'll need to teleport the item stand to wherever you want it to be. So I've already got handles on the council here, so I'm just going to try and bring it over to maybe around here. That looks pretty good. So the another thing that I'm going to need to do is actually rotate the, item, the armor stand a little bit because it's currently not facing the, the way I want it to if I'm going to bring them over to that side area. So we can use rotation, if I can spell it correctly. Open and close some square brackets, and now we can rotate the general direction the armor stands pointing in. So if we say 90.0F, that's... There we go. So that's going to rotate the armor stand around till it's facing the direction that we need. So. I, it was currently at 90 degrees. I rotated it to 180 degrees to get the armor stand to look where I want, but you can rotate it in any direction that you want pretty much. So I could rotate it to 100 degrees, for instance. That's going to slip, spin it around a bit, and you guys can actually get this to go at pretty good angle. So if I wanted to do something a bit odd, like 125, it's actually going to rotate at a bit of an off angle here. So you can actually use commands to get the armor stand to, to kind of fine-tune the exact angle that you want it at. But anyway, 180 degrees worked just fine for me because I kind of just want them to be facing off in this direction when I place them down over here. Now before we teleport the armor stand, there's one more important thing that we need to do. We need to give it the value no gravity colon 1. This makes it so that we can have the armor stand hover in midair without it falling. So you may notice that if you place an armor stand down ordinarily and you remove the block from underneath it, the armor stand is going to fall. Giving it no gravity makes it so that the armor stand will not fall if we remove the block from underneath it. So that obviously was not as good a demonstration of that as I wanted it to be. Let's try this again. I said go gravity instead of no gravity, which is why that didn't work. You guys are all probably laughing at me. There we go. Now you can see that it is now hovering in midair would we'll remove that block. So 
Now it's all the way down here, but that's no big deal. We can just teleport it back up. So running the teleport command again, we need to get a general idea of where we want it to go. So you can get exact coordinates so I can memorize the 244.99.55 if I wanted to. Whoops, that's the wrong function key. There we go. Or we can just try to approximate it with relative coordinates from the tel from the item stands from the armor stands current position. So either way, we need the teleport command, and we'll set that up similar to the entity data command. So we need to say at e, and inside some square brackets, once again, type equals armor stand, give it a small radius on there, and then we need to give it some values. So again, we can use tilde for relative coordinates. Now I need to go need the armor stand to go back up several blocks since I dropped through the floor. So I'm going to do that. I also need to make it go back a little bit in other areas, but I'm just going to stick with the y-axis for now, so that's going to teleport it upwards some, and now we're back where it was before I dropped it through the floor. So now we're also going to look at the F3 key, and this will tell you the directions that you're facing, and this is helpful for knowing what direction you want to teleport it in. So from the armor stand's current position, I need to go towards the positive Z direction, primarily. So when I set up the command, I'm going to get rid of that positive 6, because I don't want it six blocks higher. I'm going to go over into the third tilde, the Z coordinates, and then I need to go positive Z a few blocks. So I'm going to see four blocks and see what that looks like. And this is mostly, much like rotating it, a bit of a trial and error sort of thing. So I need to make it go back one more block now. That's a little bit better. And now obviously it's not centered on this block, but the armor stand is, which is not what I want. So I'm going to need to make it go back a little bit, and I need to go in this direction a little bit. So this direction is the negative x direction, and then there's the positive z a little bit. So how I'm going to set this up is actually go off into the negative x by a few blocks. So not by a whole block, I think maybe 0.6 blocks will work, and then back even less, maybe 0.2 blocks. We're going to see what that looks like. And this needs to be negative, of course, before I forget that, so negative 0.6 there. That's going to move it over a bit, and yeah, it's still a bit low, it's still not over far enough, all that, so I'm actually going to lower this down maybe to about 0.2, that 0.2 is going to change into a 0.3, and it needs to go a bit higher, so I'm going to say half a block upwards, and that moves it in the position I need it. Now it's a little bit too high, so I can just get rid of all these values here and start over, and I can say minus 0.1 there lower him a little bit, and that doesn't look too awful bad. Now, where he's at, he's facing, I mean, this works. It looks like he's just kind of thrown on the carpet here. But in, for me, he's he's actually looking up a little bit high. So let's go back over to the armor stand here. And I'm going to go all the way back to the pose command with the right arm. And I'm going to move these values around a little bit. So maybe the negative 30 was a bit much. I'm going to see what negative 20 looks like. Actually, that brings him out. But that brings him out a little bit. So, you know, what what's going on here? It's negative twenty works, and I think I altered the Z for some reason a little bit. Let me try to bring that back in a bit. There we go. So that looks a bit better. But I'm gonna lower that first value even more because I still think he's looking too high. I'm gonna change that to ten, and that's what I mean by fine tuning. Once we get it to the location that we want. Once we see what he looks like here, we can actually change the arms on the position on the armor stand, the rotation in that, to get it a little bit, a little bit better. But now that he's been rotated, yeah, a little bit funny now from after those changes, we're going to need to teleport the armor stand to a better position again. So now we need to go to the negative Z a little bit, I think, and maybe even towards the negative X once more. So let's go back to that teleport command. And let's go to the negative z sum, so maybe negative 0.2 and maybe negative 0.1 on the x and see what that looks like. So that centers him a bit more, and once again, he's a bit low because the arm lowered him some. So I'm just going to fly back over here, get rid of these values, and raise the armor stand a little bit. So maybe just raise him by 0.1. That's a little bit low, and there we go, that's a lot better. And so, now I think that actually looks pretty good. He, Aramis here, is resting on the carpet. He's looking off in the direction I kind of want him to. And he's a little bit funny because it looks like I just kind of carelessly set him down. And his base is a bit uneven. So that actually makes sense with that angle and everything for him to be a little bit lopsided like that. So once you have the item that you want in the position and where you want it to be, 
The last thing I recommend you doing is you turning the armor stand invisible. Now before you do this, it helps to remember the exact location of the armor stand itself. So if I want to take this item off the armor stand, and I try to right click, I'm right now right clicking over Aramis, he's not moving anywhere. Because this is an armor stand, you need to cl click on the armor stand itself, not on the item. So if I go over here towards the armor stand's body, now he's going to come off and I can put him back on. So that's one thing to remember exactly where the, the, items, the armor stand is. So it's the same with Porthos over here. He's resting on the council, but if I try to right click him, I'm not going to be able to pick him up. I need to go over here a bit because the armor stands over here. And if I right click off to the side here, that's where I'll be able to pick him up. So just something to remember before we run this last command. And this last command is again the entity data command. And if I delete all this stuff in here, the tag that we now need to use is the invisible tag like I used at the beginning of the video. So invisible colon one will make that armor stand disappear and now we just have the item looking like he's just sitting there like he belongs. So once again the armor stand is over here so to remove the item we just need to pick him up where the armor stand itself is and we can set him back down as well. So that guys is how I position handles on a console or on any surface that I want them to. And this will work with any item that you want, and you can position it to locations that you want for fancy decoration. In my old world save, I had this TARDIS, I had some swords lined up on here. I'll have to put all this decoration back, but if you look in the background of some of my older videos, you can see quite a bit of this armor stand art that I've incorporated into the background. But primarily, I really like using it for handles again because, as I said, I give them a custom name, and this is a way of retaining the custom name and still placing him down and making him look like he's on the council without placing him down on the ground properly because that will get rid of his name when I pick him up again. So I hope you found this video very useful, guys. And that's a bit about not just placing handles down like that, but about armor stand art in general. That's pretty much the foundations of it. That pose tag can be used to rotate the head, the body, the legs, the arms of the armor stand. And you can do all kinds of different statues and fancy decoration with that if you guys want to. So this is pretty much the start of using the Entity Data Command to manipulate armor stands and make all kinds of different creative stuff with it. And if you look it up on the internet, armor stand art or something like that, you can find all kinds of very cool things that people have done with armor stands since they've been added into the game. So once again, guys, I do hope you found that video useful, and that's all for this video today, guys. So thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. So goodbye for now, everyone.